Cheers, everyone. Happy Easter. And welcome to this month's edition of uh, Astronomy on Tap. I am Laurent Legrand, your co-host tonight with Jake, who will present the pub quiz later on. And um, here is how tonight is going to go. Um, after discussing the news, we will have an amazing presentation by our speaker, during which you can ask your questions on um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and all social media, YouTube as well. Um, I will ask this question uh, at the end of the of the session. Um, after which, we will uh, go to the to the pub quiz, and you will have a chance to win an amazing prize. And also, you'll will have a chance to beat our uh, speaker. Um, and then we will all enjoy a nice beer uh, after the quiz. Uh, so, without further ado, um, our speaker of tonight is uh, Hector Olivares. Uh, from the University of Nijmegen. Hi, Hector. Hi, Laurent. Hi, everybody. And joining uh, to speak about the news is the amazing Katja Fonseva that you've seen last month. Hello. Um, how are you go going, guys? How are you doing? <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Still digesting the eggs. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we can uh, start by uh, talking about, uh, about the news. And the first one is that 48 years ago, um, we launched Pioneer 11 uh, that uh, you might know because there is this famous plaque that we sent with the, male, the naked male and human, uh, male and female on it in case it uh, encounters um, alien <laughs> and also the position of the of the earth on it uh, and yes it was 40 years ago and it was the first uh, with pioneer 10 so it's twin uh, satellite um, spacecraft to be designed to go to outer space um, and its point was to study the environment of jupiter and, and saturn and after uh, flying by jupiter in november 1974 and Saturn in September 1979, uh, it was it kept going, <laughs> and it was shut down in 95 because it couldn't power any of its instruments anymore. Um, I actually have to add that uh, uh, also one of the things that uh, Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 were supposed to study. So for uh, it's asteroid belt. So Pioneer 11 was a uh, second spacecraft to pass by asteroid belt mm -hmm. because the first one was Pioneer 10 that was launched one year before that. So yeah, poor Pioneer 11, not so lucky, <laughs> not the first one. But yeah, so they were also the first two, let's say, to fly by asteroid belt. So that was also very important and very interesting. Yeah, I read that it was yeah one of the, one of the mission as well to study yeah, the asteroid belt, but uh, yeah. And, but they're now, yeah, it is not the farthest object after Voyager 1 and 2 uh, from us uh, at one, 105 AU. So an AU for the people who don't know is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And so it's quite, uh, it's quite far away now. <laughs> um, Yep. But do you, do you know if the if it is the farther the, the if the Voyager is the farther away to which we have communication or is really the the, the, no, the, the most farther away? No, it's the most further away. It stopped communicating a long time ago. I think uh, it was shut down in '95, and I think probably around that time it stopped. It was too far. I see. Well, at least we didn't get any more any science data anymore. Yeah, they actually tried to um, try to get communication with Pioneer Ten. And I think it was successful, like the last successful connection was in 2003 or, or something like that. And then a couple of years later, they tried again, but uh, uh, yeah, it didn't work. So uh, the, the last communication was about in 2003, I think. And the distance was about 80 astronomical units at yeah. that point. So it was really just sending it and like then letting it go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, well, that's kind of the same that uh, happened to also New Horizons, uh, the mission that was uh, the main objective was to study Pluto. Mm -hmm. Well, it was more recent, right? Yeah. New yeah. 
yeah, and it's also going. <laughs> um, yeah, um, that was the first news. <laughs> the the second one is the is the new picture of uh, of the black hole, and uh, that um, that maybe Hector can can uh, tell us a bit a bit more. I, I don't know if you're directly working on that because you're in the event horizon team as well, right? Yes, well, I, I was not uh, in the directly in the team that that led uh, that paper. Yeah. Um, so my, my main task within the Event Horizon Telescope is to um, to produce uh, simulations of how the plasma and the um, the magnetic field and the and radiation behaves close to the black hole. So that that part is a bit related, but I, I was not involved in in really in, in uh, leading this uh, paper on polarization. However, I, I can say that it is an extremely interesting result because it allows us for the first time to um, have an idea on how uh, uh, and what is the structure of the magnetic fields uh, close to the to the uh, black hole, yeah. and, and this is uh, using the uh, one uh, property of of, uh, of light to which we are not so familiarized, which is polarization. And it's basically the, the orientation of the of the um, of the electric vector of the of the wave as if as if it travels uh, through space. So uh, this orientation is related to the orientation of the magnetic field, and then by by looking at this orientation, we can uh, gain information on the structure of the magnetic field. And and, and this is uh, well extremely important for black holes because the the structure of the magnetic field is what determines how uh, this powerful uh, jets um, launch almost at the speed of light are, are formed. Yeah, I've heard that it was yeah giving some understanding on how the matter is being eaten by the black hole and how yeah it, it gives these powerful jets after. Right. So yeah, for the people who, who didn't know, go check out the picture. It's it's really, really nice. Uh, you can really see the, 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 yeah, the spiraling sort of lines of the mag magnetic field. Uh, it's, it's a really cool picture. Yes, I, I should mention that these, these spirals uh, don't represent really the magnetic field, but they represent the direction of the polarization of light. So the, the magnetic field is, is supposed to be the mainly perpendicular to, to those lines. Ah, oh, okay. So it's not directly the magnetic field. And, right, it's not directly, but it gives an idea of, to recover the structure of the magnetic field. Okay. Well, yeah, we, yeah, I hope we will get more pictures of that and more and more detail. <laughs> But that's, that would be great. <laughs> but that's really, really cool. Um, yeah. What else did you prepare for us, Loran? Moving on is ingenuity, of course, the, the little helicopter uh, on uh, the Mars rover uh, Perseverance that is going to do his, do his first flight soon. So for those who followed also last month, we talked about it and how we were excited that uh, there would be a helicopter on Mars. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I've read that it has been very recently put on the ground um, um, and that it will uh, do its first flight um, no earlier than the 11th of April. Uh, and it depends, this depends on, on the condition of the wind and all of that, because yeah, the first flight is not gonna be so impressive. <laughs> I've read that it's gonna hover about, uh, what is it? Three meters, yeah, three meters above the ground for 30 seconds and then go back down. <laughs> Just this. Well, maybe in terms of Earth flying uh, on Earth, that's not so impressive, but I think we should also highlight that uh, the main objective of this uh, helicopter is just uh, actually a technology demonstration. Mm. So, what scientists want to see if actually it's possible to fly on Mars uh, because it's not so straightforward as on Earth because uh, even though the, the gravity on Mars is significant, so it's about one third of Earth's gravity, but for example, the atmosphere is just 1% as dense as the uh, Earth's atmosphere at the, sur at the surface. And then also uh, the temperature uh, difference between the daytime and nighttime is like the difference is really huge. Mm -hmm. So also technology-wise, it's very uh, dangerous, let's say, because during the day, the temperature is very high. But then during the night, uh, the temperatures drop to 
freezing freezingly cold yeah. so then it's also dangerous like if, if, if i don't know if your um, helicopter is uh, slightly fragile then also these freezing temperatures at night will be uh, very dangerous yeah, so it, yeah. mm-hmm. even if it flies if it hovers three <laughs> meters above the ground for 30 seconds that's still really really cool because that's for the first time and if it works it's just amazing yeah I, I hope we will have maybe some some footage of it. Uh, maybe they will do like the the landing. You know, we will be able to to have live footage of the of the helicopter hovering above. And and fun fact, actually, the um, this helicopter carries a piece of fabric that was on the Wright brothers uh, flyers, which was the first powered flying um, um, vehicle on Earth. So the, the first powered flying vehicle on Mars is going to carry a piece of the first flying vehicle uh, on, on Earth. So I think that's, that's really cool that this little piece of fabric went through <laughs> all the <laughs> epoch just to come and go all the way to Mars. I really like this kind of small uh, trivia. It's, it's very nice. It's, it's very uh, symbolic. No? Yeah, 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 exactly. I think that's, that's why they did it, right? It's just to to make it, uh, because I, I don't think there is a, a reason for the piece of fabric <laughs> to be there. <laughs> well, the reason is, is that it's an achievement for us okay. humans, no? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, and then as the last um, final news, the crew of Inspiration4 has been revealed. So last time, actually, we talked about um, a crew going to space that was made of a professional commander and three civilians. And this time we have a crew uh, that is going to go for three days in space. Um, and uh, they will, it will be an all civilian crew. So no, no astronauts. Um, and the point of the mission, if I understood, there is two things. It's really apparently to send only civilians to, to space. Uh, and the second one was to raise money f- for l- the treatment, the cancer treatment unit of the St. Jude uh, Children's Hospital. Um, and yeah, so the crew has been has been revealed, and it's yeah, it's this this whole mission sending civilian to space really on symbolism, I'm guessing, and and yeah, making a step. And so the people have been chosen to represent like a, a motto or an idea. And so the, the commander is Jared Isaacman, and he's representing leadership because he's the commander. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> and, um, the pilot is Cyan Proctor, which is an entrepreneur, and he was selected through like sort of a shark tank emission. So there's something where people uh, present their ideas, I think, and, and there is a panel and they judge if they are like good entrepreneurs or something, <laughs> but what is supposed to represent prosperity. Um, then we have Hayley Arsenault, which is like a, an employee for the hospital and she's a bone cancer survivor and thus she's representing hope. And uh, the fourth one, Christopher Sembroski, is representing generosity because he donated uh, money to the hospital and there was a raffle that was organized to yeah kind of a lottery to to know who will be the fourth uh, crew member so that's that's quite interesting and yeah compared to what we talked last month this is actually all civilian with no criterion or no money to spend <laughs> so this is getting us closer to going to space <laughs> so it's quite uh, quite a mission well I wouldn't say that it's without money at all because still part of people they kind of bought their ticket let's say in a way so it was not directly buying it but it was Mm -hmm. making a huge donation and then participating in the lottery so well so the 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 main guy he bought two tickets i think and then he gave like the the bone cancer survivor is really she was just picked like i mean okay she had to survive bone cancer so respect of course i'm not saying anything but uh yeah that's um the the last time what we presented last month were people paying millions to to go in space and here yeah that's true but i yeah i just think it's quite cool (laughs) 
Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, this time they will just fly for three days, uh, and they will not go in the in the ISS. It's really just uh, quite just a three days mission in uh, low low orbit around Earth. So that's but I, I read that they will be at the same altitude of the ISS, right? Even yeah. even if they are not not visiting. That's uh, they, yeah, they're not uh, they're not visiting, but yes, they are gonna they're gonna be at the same altitude. So it's uh, yeah, it's quite it's quite exciting. I, I really enjoy all these missions that are going. Like every time you, I have the feeling that every day I look and there is a new mission. <laughs> yes, just <laughs> these days. Yep. Um, okay, then um, I guess we will move on to to the talk. Um, if it's okay with everyone. <laughs> so, yes. Ciao, Katja. Ciao, ciao. Good luck, Hector. <laughs> and um, yeah. Hector, I guess now you can tell us all about um, black hole imposters. The floor is yours. Sure. I, I hope you you can uh, see my screen now. Uh, so you can you can see the presentation, right? Yes, it's good. Good. Uh, so yes. I will talk about black hole imposters. So, as, as you know, uh, black holes are some of the the most mysterious objects in the in the universe. Uh, but today, I will talk you uh, not really about black holes, but an, uh, about another class of objects that that uh, look like black holes. Uh, one can say that they smell like black black holes, but they are something uh, completely different. Um, these are generally called uh, black hole mimickers. I here call them black hole imposters. But uh, to talk about them first, let's uh, recall uh, what is a black hole. So uh, if you want to launch a spaceship, let's say the, the Pioneer uh, 10 or, or 11 uh, to escape the gravity of, of planet Earth, uh, you need a, a minimal speed. And, and this uh, minimal speed is called the, the escape velocity. Uh, and, and this depends on the, on the planet's mass and its radius. Hector, just a second. Yeah. Um, yes. some, some things are hidden in the presentation. So pay attention, people. <laughs> and also to the presentation, of course. <laughs> ah. So there is some some Easter egg to find. Um, okay, can go on. Right. So uh, right. So I, I was I was telling about this uh, this minimal speed that you need to uh, to escape the the planet. So this depends on the on the uh, planet mass and radius. So uh, we usually think of black holes uh, just as objects that are so massive and so uh, compressed that uh, that this escape velocity is equal to the speed of light. Uh, but according to the uh, theory of general relativity, they are, they are something even uh, much stranger than this. So in general relativity, um, the, so what we perceive as gravity is actually a distortion of um, space and time caused by, by um, an object mass. So um, in, in general relativity, space and time distort close uh, to a, a massive object in, in what we perceive as gravity. And in this diagram that is here, uh, you can see uh, time going in the um, vertical direction, so from, from bottom to top, and distance uh, from a black hole center uh, going from left to right. So, so here, uh, here is a black hole center. And you, as you can see here, um, well, these cones represent the, the range of influence of any event that is happening in, in this location, or in this location, or in this location. Uh, so cones open at the speed of light. And you can see that when you approach the black hole, these cones start to tilt. And when you cross this imaginary surface that is the that is called the event horizon, um, all of the cone is contained in the in this interior part of the of the black hole. So this means that any event that happens in, inside the black hole will never affect any, anything uh, outside in the rest of the universe. We didn't say that. Um, this, the, the, this region, the black hole interior, becomes causally disconnected from the rest of the universe, and we call uh, this uh, the surface that se separates the, the two causally disconnected regions uh, the event horizon. Um, right. So this sounds too strange to, to exist, but actually there, we have many reasons to believe uh, black holes are real. Um, we have seen their um, their uh, signatures in gravitational waves. Uh, we have uh, also seen pictures of their shadows, and um, also we have we have no better way of explaining what are the extremely uh, powerful uh, events that that power um, 
some of the brightest objects in the universe, like X-ray binary synaptic galactic nuclei. Uh, furthermore, we even uh, was a, something that is very important for us physicists is that equations uh, predict their, their existence. So, um, in fact, the the fact that the that the, the gravitational collapse that produces black holes is inevitable is the the reason um, why they uh, gave the Nobel Prize uh, to Roger Penrose uh, last year. So, but why are black holes uh, believed to power these extremely uh, bright um, astronomical objects? So the the reason is that a black hole is, is something very similar to to an edge of the world. So. It is it similar to, to the, this waterfall at uh, the edge of the world where uh, things can do anything uh, but fall. So in this fall, they um, accelerate and they um, will give away uh, a lot of energy. This energy produces heat and uh, this and this fall turns out to be a, a means of extracting energy that is even more um, efficient than, than the nuclear fusion that, that um, powers stars. So in this other um, slide, you can see uh, pictures or movies of, of the center of our galaxy where we see exactly the behavior that we expect uh, from a black hole. Here you can see infrared images of the, um, well, of the orbits of stars. And you can see here these uh, stars that go around an object that uh, seems to be uh, nothing. So, um, uh, seems to go around a region that, that looks completely empty. And by calculations, we know that, that the object that should uh, sit there should be uh, 4 million solar masses, while these stars are about uh, 20 solar masses. And if we look at this at that same region, not, now not in infrared light, but in X-rays, we see uh, these flares that are exactly what we expect from matter that, that heats uh, while it is uh, falling uh, towards the, the black hole interior. But is this enough evidence for the existence of black holes? Actually, um, probably not. This is because, by the, because of the very nature of the, of the event horizon, um, it is very uh, difficult to, to prove its existence. So the, the event horizon is what defines a black hole. Uh, if there is an event horizon, we, we say that, that we have a, a black hole. However, from the, nothing that happens at the event horizon can affect what happens uh, outside. So any measurement or any observation taken exactly at the event horizon will fail to reach an observer that is outside the, the black hole. So this, this means that we can uh, probe regions closer and closer to the, to the event horizon, but never the, the event horizon itself. So the event horizon, as well as the black hole interior, are uh, in principle inaccessible to science, at least uh, classically. Um, so you may wonder uh, what are gravitational waves? Because when the when the first detection was out, people said that that this was a proof of the existence of the black, of black holes. And actually, this is this is partially true because the this last part of the wave when it uh, start uh, decaying is called the ring down, and is is thought to be a signature of the of the presence of a, of a black hole. However. Well, later it was it was proven that uh, the ring down doesn't actually uh, probe the event horizon itself, but it originates uh, slightly farther away at a region called the photon sphere. Um, this this region is basically um, a region where um, light can go around the black hole in, in uh, close orbits. So it is it is um, in in this region you could in principle. Uh, Look at the look in front of you and look at your back because the because light uh, can go in closed um, circular trajectories. So in, and in order to have this, you need um, so only you need an object that is extremely compact and extremely dense because only around those objects photon spheres form. But this object doesn't necessarily need to be a, a black hole, and that takes us to the our first uh, black hole imposter, the wormhole. Uh, so a wormhole is a, is a speculative solution to the to Einstein equations. It is uh, supposed to connect disparate points of space and time, or even different universes. And um, making one of them, at least theoretically, is uh, very easy. You just take um, one part of the space that that um, represents a black hole, 
another uh, that is similar and you attach them um, at the throat slightly outside from the horizon or the event horizon of the two black holes. So no event horizon is present here. Um, and so you can in principle travel from uh, from one part of, of uh, to the other without ever um, making crossing an, an event horizon. So the researchers that I mentioned in, in the last slide actually uh, tested these um, gravitational waves uh, from something that, that uh, falls into a wormhole instead of a black hole. You see that the, that the, that the, uh, form, that the shape of the gravitational waves uh, for something falling into a black hole, the, the black line is very similar to that of, of something following, falling into a wormhole. But this uh, first um, region, which is the, the one that we can presently uh, probe with gravitational wave detectors, is, is still uh, very similar for, for the two cases. And uh, we need to wait longer and also to improve the sensitivity of, of instrument in order to, to know if what we are seeing is, uh, is really a, 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 a wormhole or a black hole. However, even, even though it is possible to distinguish, one could always say that the, the, the part uh, in which one attaches the, the two uh, black holes to form the wormhole is uh, closer and closer to the horizon. So this would mean, this would make the, the gravitational wave signals increasingly similar to those of a black hole. And then again, it is not really possible to, to prove that you have a black hole, an event horizon, but only to, to say that uh, within some bounds, uh, you, you are sure that, that you don't have a wormhole. And another way of distinguishing wormholes from black holes is by looking at the at the bizarre optics that they that they produce. So sometimes it is possible that a, a light ray has enough energy to to enter uh, through one of the to, to through our side of the of the universe, but not enough energy to escape from the other side. And then what happens is that it is reflected and and um, in and therefore in the structure of, of of its shadow we would see a dark region. So the, that would correspond to the to the view of the other other universe, but we would see uh, another region with, where we see reflections uh, from our own universe. And so this is this is the the wormhole, uh, how we could distinguish um, it from from a black hole. Uh, however, there are other um, there are other um, black hole imposters that that are the, well that are also very interesting, but uh, but. Um, are very different in nature. Uh, one example is the, the boson star. So a, a boson star is a, is a star made of some uh, special kind of matter. It is called uh, bosonic matter or, ax, or axionic matter. So there are many, many names for it because, the, because there are many models of, the, of cosmology that predict uh, the existence of these objects. So some, this includes some dark matter model like uh, axion dark matter, are, they are also called ultralight axions, quantum wave dark matter. There are many dark matter models that, that predict that this kind of matter uh, should exist and form uh, these objects. These objects can uh, become very compact, but compact can grow to millions of solar masses as the, as the black holes at the centers of, of galaxies, but they have a, a, a very interesting peculiarity. So they, they have no event horizon, they are not black holes, they have no singularity at, at the center, but they also have no surface because the, the matter that forms them is dark. Um, they, it doesn't interact in any way with usual matter. So if, if you uh, went to collide with one of these stars, nothing would happen to you. You would simply exit at, at the other side because this because um, you wouldn't hit the star by anything except by its, its uh, gravitational pull. Some um, people have uh, made simulations of how these objects would look, um, even simulating the, the dynamics of the, of the plasma that would surround them similarly to black holes. And it turns out that they are actually um, difficult, but in principle possible to distinguish uh, from black holes. So if, if we had a, a, an image of a boson star, in principle, we could uh, know it and, and say that at least this is uh, not a black hole. And how about other ways to distinguish them come from uh, strange interactions that they would have with other matter. So people have also simulated how they would um, swallow clouds of gas passing through them. And, and something very interesting and different from black holes would happen because matter would not disappear beyond the, the event horizon. 
and also have even simulated waveforms uh, from uh, collisions of boson stars. In fact, there is a, a, a very recent paper in which people have uh, say that one of the events um, detected by LIGO and, and, and Virgo could is more likely to, to be a, a collision between boson stars rather than a collision uh, between black holes. But they can do very very funny things. For example, one can cross uh, the other in a in a um, head-on collision and exit at the other side and keep oscillating. So, which is an interaction that, that you would never have uh, with black holes or, or with any other object. So, uh, these these two objects, uh, boson stars and, and wormholes, um, are predicted by by theory, and they uh, but but they. Um, their existence doesn't say anything about the existence of, of black holes. So in our universe, all of these kinds of objects uh, could coexist if the if the matter if the models that um, that uh, predict them are, are true. However, uh, also the, there are other class of black hole uh, imposters or black hole makers that have uh, been thought of as um, aiming to replace black holes by a better model. And the reason we would maybe like to to replace black holes is because um, there are because um, some features of black hole uh, are very problematic for other uh, parts of, of physics. So, well, the the most important one is the singularity. So, at the center of of, of the of black holes, we have a, 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 a region which has infinite curvature of the spacetime, and where uh, the well, basically the the physics is, is broken there. The loss of, of uh, physics, as, as we know it, uh, cannot predict anything, and probably it needs to be replaced by something else. Uh, but another uh, another uh, problem to which people have dedicated a lot of attention is what is known as the information paradox, and this is related to the event horizon. So black holes are, are uh, very simple objects. They are characterized just by the, their mass and by the uh, rotation speed. So if if two black holes have the same mass and they rotate at the same rate, they are identical. They, so they, there are no other properties that can allow to distinguish them. But this also means that, that if you uh, feed a black hole with different things, let's say that, that uh, you feed one of, of these uh, black holes with cheese and, and with noodles, uh, the two black holes will look exactly the same. There will be no possibility to distinguish them. And this violates one of the principles of quantum mechanics that um, ask uh, to information be preserved um, by any process. This means that if you look at the um, at the, the state of the of a system after some process happened, and you had enough information about the process, you could reconstruct what the system was before that that process happened. And with well, black holes prevent this completely because the because um, all black holes that share mass and, and spin are uh, identical. So um, this loss of information happens when, when matter crosses the, the event horizon and therefore um, well, the event horizon is problematic. And this is what is called as the, as the information paradox. So uh, to avoid this, people have uh, tried to think of ways to uh, prevent the existence of the, the event horizon. And one of the um, first attempts was the is what we call the the Grava star. Grava star stands for a gravitational vacuum star, and it is and, and it's an object that is in some ways uh, similar to to some Easter eggs. So it has a, a cross that is made of, of exotic matter, and it has a, a core uh, which has a surprise inside. And in this case, the surprise is a, a region uh, full of dark energy. So it is a cross that, so that surrounds a, a region um, of um, gravitational vacuum. That is that's why it is called gravitational vacuum star, which is basically a, a, an expanding universe uh, inside of it. So the, the proposed formation for this uh, mechanism for these uh, objects is that it is that they result uh, from a phase transition that happens um after um well in, in a next degenerate state after the after the, the process that generates neutron stars then um if you compress it even more a uh, neutrons generate and you can have a, a quark star and if you uh, and if you compress it even more then um 
there is another phase transition that causes uh, this this matter to convert uh, to this gravitational vacuum. And so, well, this model is um, dynamically um, consistent, but there are many many questions about it. So, for example, what is the specific phase transition that that produces this? Uh, also, what is the matter that forms the surface uh, so that it doesn't glow? Because if if it is realistically within an, an accretion disk, matter should be falling onto it, and and this uh, should hit the surface. So uh, many exotic um, uh, properties have have been um, well are required in order to to make this uh, object similar to black holes. And well, since we don't have any any clue of, of what could uh, give it these properties, um, this model has has not been very. Um, it is not taken so so seriously, but it is it is uh, it is extremely interesting. Um, however, well, there are other models that, that try to, to address the same um, um, the, the same problems with the uh, with the event horizon, and one of them uh, comes from string theory, and it is also something that that uh, is related to to um, Easter. Um, well, it is a, it is called the the fossil. So. Um, um, in, in this case, we have a, a clearer picture of what is the phase transition that goes from the from a neutron stars and quark stars into into this state of matter. And in this case, um, it is it is considered that this that to be the most the most extreme form of the generic matter when neutrons and quarks uh, form melt into what is believed to be its most um, fundamental constituents that are uh, strings, so quantum strings. Um, these objects are, are very complex because they are supposed to be a, a, a quantum superposition of, of many geometries and, and strings that vibrate not only in or uh, four dimensions but in, in also in, in additional uh, compact dimensions. But a very interesting property that they have is that they may have no event horizon, but still they are able to, to trap a uh, light rays. How they do it? So they do it by by uh, trapping them in chaotic orbits. So this is a simulation of a light ray that goes inside a, 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 one of these force balls. Um, and then the, uh, so you, you can see that it makes a lot of turns and it can never escape, even though it is not captured by, by an event horizon. So this is a, a, um, a sequence where, do, where, this, um, where one of these force balls is made increasingly um, similar to a black hole. So here there is a, a screen with uh, four colors uh, beyond, and this is how the the presence of the fossil distorts the image that is behind. You can see how it is; it becomes more and more chaotic until on, until here uh, there are black regions which correspond to uh, light rays that never escaped. And uh, in principle, you can you could uh, continue this process until you have something that is extremely uh, similar to a black hole. Uh, this. Um, this object is, is supposed to solve the, the uh, in, this information paradox by storing information in the complex structure of, of strings and by radiating it away, um, not in, a, in the uh, chaotic form of the usual Hawking radiation, but um, by making some parts of the, of the radiation related to uh, the radiation that, is, that comes from other parts of the, of the structure. And well, just to just to conclude, I uh, wanted to um, show you or to convince you that, that it is um, maybe not possible to prove the existence of the event horizon, but we can always um, increase our, our observe or the precision of our observation and say that that observations are consistent with the presence of the event horizon within some bounds. Um, we can also. We, I, I wanted also to show you that there are objects that are predicted by classical general relativity that, that can mimic the behavior of black holes, but are not black holes, and that uh, observing them could mean uh, the existence of new fundamental physics. Um, also, I wanted to talk about the, these other objects that were proposed to solve some of the problems of general relativity, and and uh, also to tell you that even though uh, these objects don't solve all the problems, and and that and even though they have uh, they lack uh, many things to be uh, consistent with what we know. These kind of ideas are necessary, even uh, though at first they are incomplete, because this is uh, how science progress by um, by looking of ways in which uh, a, a problem can be solved. 
and uh, continuously making uh, these ideas refined and, and better. Uh, however, this is not the, the uh, well, the, the final work. There can be other different solutions to this information paradox, and it is and there are both even people that uh, are not sure whether this information paradox is even really a problem. So, um, well, the search is ongoing. We have improved instruments, and we, in order to see uh, whether black holes are still the best explanation for everything, or if uh, some of them are imposters. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Hector, for for this <laughs> nice presentation. I have to say, almost science fiction to me, <laughs> with uh, with with all this wormhole and and fuzzball <laughs> and and all of all of this. That's uh, wow. That that's really almost metaphysics. Uh, yes, well, it is the the um, the, the existence of the of the horizon is, is something that has is almost in the boundary be, between uh, philosophy and, and science. <laughs> I can imagine. So then we have a few questions uh, that, uh, um, yeah, that the um, uh, viewers uh, asked. So, if you travel through a wormhole, how can you exit from the second black hole if you're still within the event horizon? Ah, uh, well, this is because in the way you construct uh, wormholes, um, you attach two uh, two black holes at each side. But you attach them uh, from slightly farther away from the from the event horizon, so you never cross an, an event horizon. You could, in principle, also attach them uh, well from inside the, the event horizon, mm -hmm. but that would not be useful to uh, to go to the other side. So you 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 attach the black holes together, but from outside of of the of, black hole of the two event horizons, yes. <laughs> But the black hole is within the event horizon, sort of, no? Um, well, the black hole is the, the event horizon. Yeah. Okay. But, so the, but the, but the space-time solution is not the... the so the, the space-time solution, let's say, for example, uh, uh, the sun, outside uh, outside the sun, it has the same, uh, same uh, space-time structure as a black hole. Yeah. But you don't have the, but it's not a black hole because before you you uh, have the, the event horizon, you have the surface of the sun. Ah, okay. Understand. And inside the sun, the, the space time is different because there is matter. Okay. So I hope that that answered the question for whoever asked it. And if it's not, please join us to the to the to the pop quiz after. Uh, second question: Are there white holes? So I don't know what that would be, but do you know of existence of white holes? Uh, well, no one knows if they exist. Um, well, just to, to explain what is a what is a white hole. Uh, a white hole is the uh, the opposite of, of a black hole. So that, that is also a, a solution of the Einstein equations. Uh, so if if a black hole is um, eating everything, let's say um, a black a, a white hole would be uh, radiating um, everything, and it, it so in the same way as, as uh, gravity. Um, causes you to be attracted by a black hole in um, uh, gravity could uh, cause you to be uh, repelled by a, by a white hole. So um, some uh, solutions of the of the equations shows that, that black holes could be connected at the other side uh, to a, so that black holes could be connected at the other side uh, to, a, to a white hole. White hole. Uh, but well, we have, um, we know of places in the universe or, um, or um, astrophysical uh, objects that look like black holes, but we don't know of any anyone that looks like like a white hole. Like a white so that's uh, so yes, we don't know, but probably not. <laughs> okay, because we would see it otherwise, or is we would see it. Yes, <laughs> we would see it. Yeah. Okay, that's getting ready. Um, okay, let's see if I can read this next question correctly. If there is time, so that's a good start. If there is time. Could you describe one of the objects that would solve a problem of general relativity and which problem it would solve? Oh, sorry, I... I... Yeah, the, the question is, if there is time, like if you, I oh, know if you have time. <laughs> ah, okay, that way you understand. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Could you describe, I think it's if you have time. Could you describe one of the objects that would solve a problem of general relativity and which problem it would solve? So, um, one of these objects that, that would solve a problem of general relativity 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, the, maybe the the um, the most important were these these uh, last two objects, so the the gravastar and the and the fosval. They they um, well they, they were built in, in order to to solve this information paradox. Mm -hmm. So they they solve the information paradox by um, well basically by saying that horizons cannot form in in reality. Mm -hmm. that, the, that the collapse is stopped at, at some point by, by another uh, phase transition. But, um, well, another problem that, that this object could solve is, uh, for example, the, uh, what is the nature of, of dark matter? So the, um, I mentioned the, the case of, um, of boson stars. So uh, boson stars don't, are, are um, completely allowed within general relativity, so they, they, they cannot maybe say anything about the, the problems between uh, general relativity and, and, and quantum uh, mechanics, mm -hmm. but they can uh, say something about the nature of, of dark matter, because um, they, they are predicted to form if uh, this exotic matter that, that forms them, the, the bosonic field, is and, and these, these uh, axioms are, are possible to show that one of these stars existed, then we would know that uh, this hypothetic uh, particle exists. And then, the, and then we would know that that, that is the, the dark matter in the universe. Okay, that is, well, I have to say that for me, that is really advanced things. Um, but yeah, that, uh, I hope that, that answered the question. Um, yeah, a, qu a question from me. Uh, how mm -hmm. how likely are all these objects? Do you have a, pr a favorite one, or like between these four? So you described four objects, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the boson star, the grava star, the wormhole, and the first ball. Um, right. Yeah. Um, do you have any? Feedback? Well, among them, I, I, get, um, I can answer the first. Well, if, if I have any favorite, I, I do have a, one favorite, and that is the the boson star. Okay. Um, well, this is just maybe personal preference and, and a bit of, of experience uh, with them. Um, but if you ask me how likely it is that they exist, ah, that is that is difficult. So there was there was recently a, a, a paper as I was saying saying that, that one of the um, one of the gravitational um, wave events detected by LIGO could be uh, better explained by uh, by a collision of bosons such rather than, than by a, a, a merger of two black holes. Mm -hmm. um, this is this needs to be taken um, with a, a grain of salt or, or maybe with a lot of skepticism because. Um, so the um, well, be, first because it is true that, that it explains uh, some uh, a collision uh, of objects that that have a, a, that if they are black holes um, are a bit unlikely to be formed because of their masses. Mm -hmm. But um, if they are uh, boson stars, that the the um, also the, the probability of that collision. Would be uh, not so not so high, I would say. So because it 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 um, it is described as, as a head-on collision, uh, which is unlikely to happen in the in the space. So normally in, in space, objects uh, approach each other and, and start uh, orbiting each other. So they they uh, approach them by spiraling, and it is not so likely that, that things uh, collide uh, head-on. But uh, so it would be very interesting, and, and I uh, like to to dream about what would happen if we start having more and more events where statistics favor uh, the exotic option in place of the of the black hole option. Okay. So that is that's something that I, that I would like very, very much to see. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> that, would, that would be quite uh, exceptional. <laughs> right. Um, okay, then I guess uh, we will see you at the Zoom pub. Right. Mm -hmm. Where where everybody will have a chance to to try to defeat you uh, in the pub quiz, <laughs> I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, and Jack will will take over now. Um, okay. Uh, the, the the link of the Zoom pub is gonna be uh, on the screen. Very good. Perfect. Okay. See you very soon. Okay. See you. Hi everyone. So. 
as Laurent said, we'll be starting the pub quiz very soon. You need to head over to the link you can see on the screen, http colon slash slash dem dot oo slash zoom pub, all lowercase, and then you'll be able to join the quiz there. We'll be sharing the quiz on the screen shortly. Quiz is running Kahoot. You can use the app or go to kahoot.it. And if you join the Zoom pub, then we're sharing the code with you now for the quiz. And as people keep joining, we keep sharing the code. Let's give you 10 more seconds in the live stream to see the link. I put it in the chat. It's also in the description in the YouTube. So see you there over in the Zoom pub starting any moment now. 